Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's Word, so I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved, I'm God's servant, I'm God's powerful champion, and because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a big hand and love Him this day. Question, how many of you have ever been rejected even once in your life before? Have you? Yes. You applied for a job, the company did not call you? Raise your hand. How many of you applied for a school and the school said, you're not worthy? Raise your hand. Yeah, yeah. How, how many of you, 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 you crush mo in, in di kanya crush? Raise your hand. You got rejected. You got rejected. I, I, I want you to know, I, I applied for the high school department of the Ateneo. You know, I was going into high school. I took the exam. I received the letter. It said, we regret to inform you. I, I did not. I did not get into Ateneo High School. I, I, I want you to know that, that I experienced that too. I, I courted a girl when I was single. She rejected me. Maybe you're wondering, you know, how could anyone reject you? <laughs> but, but, but she did. She did. Why am I telling you that story? Because it's so easy to get that rejection. You know, sometimes, it's so easy in social media now. You post something and then your likes are less than the previous likes or the average likes. And you feel, what's wrong? Why, why are not... You know, and then you compare your likes with, with your friend's likes. But mas marami sa kanya. It's so easy to feel rejected, to feel down, to feel like a failure, and to carry that rejection as a label. Hanging around your neck wherever you go. I'm a failure. I'm a reject. There's something wrong with me. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? A few days ago, I was invited to speak to the U.S. Embassy. And, and I gave my talk in front of, in that room, in front of Americans and Filipinos, everyone working in the consular office. I gave my talk. And it, it was amazing. First time for me to understand the history of the buildings there. OMG. After my talk, they toured me. And, and they told me the history of the places. Do you know that the room where I gave my talk was the exact same room that General Yamashita was tried for his war crimes in 1945? That's how incredible the history of that place was. But then I realized I had my own history there. 30 plus years ago, I was a 21-year-old kid applying for a U.S. visa, denied. <laughs> hey, well, that was painful. But, but I, I was being invited to go to the U.S. to give a talk. And I applied again. And I said, this time, you know, people were telling me, oh, you know, you're, you're going to do it again. You, you just do it again and you're going to get approved. Denied again. <laughs> that was even more painful. But you know, in life, there's something you've got to learn. Keep walking. Stand up and keep walking. Put your foot, right foot in front of your left foot. And, and, and just keep on doing the same thing over and over again. Have you been rejected in your life? Have you failed? Have you been disappointed? Are you frustrated with what's happening in your life? You don't understand the struggle that you're in. There's so much darkness around you. And in your mind, you're saying, what is wrong with me? There is something wrong with me. I'm telling you right now, you just stand up. Pick up yourself. Keep on walking. Keep on moving. Keep on doing the right thing. Keep on following Jesus. Keep on trusting Him. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. 30 plus years later, where was I? The one who was denied to receive, not deemed worthy to receive a U.S. visa in front of the diplomats. Everyone sitting in front of me while I was the resource speaker. Shaking hands with these guys. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
When I received that letter from the Ateneo High School, we regret to inform you. And I thought I was the pinaka bobo sa buong universe. Ten years later, Ateneo College Department was inviting me to be a professor of theology in college. Ten years ago, not enough, not worthy, not intelligent enough to be a high school student. Ten years later, teach theology. In Do you understand what I'm saying? Never be defined by your rejection. Never carry it as an identity, your failure. I'll tell you why. God is bigger than whatever rejection you're going through. And whatever rejection you're going through, open up that rejection. There's a redirection to your greater future, to your brighter, brighter future. Do I hear a loud amen? And, and by the way, I'm not the preacher in this place. I'm just a feaster. I am a feaster just like you. A few years ago, I stepped down after 40 years of leading the community. And, and I love it. I love being here every week. If, you know, if I'm not traveling and going to other feasts, I'm, I'm here. And, and I, love, I love worshiping the Lord. And I love singing. And I love sitting beside you. And I love listening to God's word. And so today we're going to be hearing God's word. I, I, I just feel, you know, sometimes I just feel how blessed are we to have a community like this. How blessed are we? And, and um, how blessed are we to be a feaster? Everybody say, I'm a feaster. I'm a feaster. And, and I, I pray that the word of God just blesses you today. Amen. Amen. Please welcome our, you know, the leaders here are so, I'm, we're blessed by our, the leaders here. Amen? Amen. Please, please welcome <laughs> the one and only, my doctor, Didoy Lubaton. One big message. Well, our series talks about different ways so we can live with things. And today, I'd like to tell you, our, our talk is about greater living. Everybody say that. What does it mean to be great or to be greater? Is it part of God's plan that we become greater beings, greater living, greater purpose. And our one big message for today is this, be the bigger person. What does it mean to be a bigger person? Hmm. What does it mean to live a greater life? What does it mean to be a bigger person? Let me tell you a story. It's a story of an older brother and a younger brother. And there was one day that they were so excited because their mom and their dad came from the U.S. And Filipino children loves people coming from the overseas. Why? You said it right. And they were excited to get pasalubong. And then the mom handed them, the two brothers, handed them the pasalubong. One was, uh, th there were watches. One was brown, shinier, and bigger. And one was blue, simpler, and smaller. Naturally, the bigger brother would get the bigger share. Yes? But the younger brother snatched it, ran to the other side of the room and kept it to himself. And then the younger brother, uh, the older brother was, you know, naturally, he was visibly upset. And he was about to go to his younger brother. But the mother saw him and saw them and said, without saying a word, motion to my brother to let it go, to the brother to let it go. And he was, he stood his ground, tears swelling up in his eyes and let it go. And his name was Kuya Aboy, my older brother. In our lives, in our journey, there are many times that we're going to be tested in how we react to people. What's supposed to be yours? And then God allowed that others would get it. Lord naman, bakit siya? Bakit hindi ako? 
I realized, you know, akala ko, I thought na isahan ko yung brother ko. And I thought, I, I never got any fuss or any backlash from him, ever. Up to now. Never got any bad word from him. I realized as we grew older, I realized how many times he chose to become the bigger person. Nagparaya, nagbigay. Di naman nagpaabuso. Ibang usapan yun, ha? But he let it go so that I may have that joy of a bigger, shinier, brown watch. And it's not about the watches anymore. But it's, it's, it's that lesson that I want to share to you today. Becoming the bigger person doesn't mean that you're better than anyone else. Becoming the bigger person means you're choosing to operate from a higher level of consciousness. That means that you, are, you have that kindness, compassion, and understanding. They become your guiding principles. You live for the sake of others. You let others be happy, even if you're sad. You, you celebrate other people's wins, even if your wins are delayed. Even if you feel rejected and they would have better things, that is fine. That is, that is our lesson for today. It's not an easy talk. You know me. When I give talks, it's not easy. It's not easy to swallow and chew. But it is life-changing if you want Him to. It is God's work in us today. And that's the word. Are you ready for God's word? This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do my command. Today, let's allow God to love us so that we get to love others. Not from our own selves, but from the love of God. We, today, we're going to go to practical ways on how to practice becoming a bigger person. Why we ought to be big, not because to put people down, not to make people feel small, but because it's the right thing to do. It is God's commandment to love others as He has loved us. It's so easier. Becoming bigger is not easy. Bigger is not necessarily easier. Driving is hard in Edsa, right? You know, yung pila sa MRT, may nauuna sa'yo, right? Yung, uh, yung sa parking pa lang mamaya, di ba? Yung, yung, if you, it, it doesn't go your way. It, it's hard from the big and the small. Today, we become a bigger person not because we just want to be big. But because there's a big God in us. There's a big God working in our lives. There's a big God lifting us up from where we are now. That is, we look to Jesus, an example of one who carried the world, saved the world, even dying on a cross. He died so that we may live. Are we ready to die so that others may live? As we proceed, I'm going to give you three key reflections on our key verse. First is, you have to remember that you are loved and you are loved first. It says, love each other in the same way I have loved you. When God calls you to obedience, He blesses you first. He equips you. When He calls you to love, the premise is, you are loved first. Hindi ka mauubusan. Hindi ka mawawalan. Kasi minahal ka muna ng Panginoon. You are in a position to be generous and to be giving to others because you have been given everything that you need. That is the premise. And just a quick reflection about that. How do you feel? How do you know? How is your relationship with God? Because that matters. The commandment is hard to follow if you do not feel that you are loved by God. 
Is your God, is your relationship with God secure? You know that you are loved, that you are provided for, that, that, that you are trusting in your relationship, or you have otherwise. You feel, you know, instead of intimacy, you feel so far away, disconnected, afraid of God. How is your relationship with God today? And I my prayer today is you open up your heart, your spirit, your life to God so that He may fill you up with His love. Mahirap mahalin yung taong ayo magpamahal. <laughs> Pero mahal na mahal ka ni Lord kung alam mo lang. Hawakan mo yung katabi. Kung hindi mo kakilala, paalam ka muna. <laughs> Sabi mo sa kanya, mahal na mahal ka ni Lord. The second is this, second reflection. It's not just about you. It's not just about you. There is no greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. The secret to a great life is a great love. Jesus laid it out very clearly for us. You want to live a great life? We cannot live just for ourselves. And when we live, we serve so that others may live. And a practical reflection. Could you remember, could you recall a recent sacrifice that you did? You let go of a personal convenience so that others would be served, so that others would benefit. Could you recall? I hope you do. If you don't, make one today. It may be big, it could be small, but it counts. Everybody say, it counts. And today we're going to dive deeply further how, that, how in practical ways, in our current relevant times, how we could practice living for others, becoming a bigger person for the sake of others. Third reflection is this. You belong to God's tribe. He's, it says in the command, you are my friends if you do what I command. And simply this, we would be known that we are Christians if we love like Christ. We would be known how, by not our achievements, not by how pogi we are, not by how, hindi ako, si Brother Bo and si Brother Odi. No, I'm just tall, dark, and talkative. So... We would be known by how we love one another. When, when people, when you go into your groups, when you go into your companies, when you go, what's the energy? Are they excited that you're there? Or are they in the same energy but afraid? Are you, you know, the electric feeling of you being there inspires them or makes them perspire? We would be known by how we love one another. But let me say, you belong to God's tribe. And again, a reflection question for us today. Do people get to know Jesus more by the way they know you and your lifestyle? We are sometimes the gospel, the Bible that people can read. People don't just open up Bibles anymore. In my younger days, we all do. But now, they will just look at you. We feast her. How are you in your work? How are you in your family life? And there's one big stumbling block. I want to, before we proceed further, I want to highlight, please. There is one big enemy of a person trying to become a bigger person. It's hard, right? Bigger is not necessarily easier. And there's one big stumbling block I want to highlight and remind us all today. And it's not about what you see or do to others. It's actually self. And Ryan Holiday, I've read the books of Ryan Holiday. Anybody here who has read the book of Ryan Holiday? Ninyo Shakilala? I want to introduce him to you. And he wrote a book, Ego is the Enemy. Everybody say that with me. Ego 
often gets in the way of becoming the bigger person. And it's the part of us that wants to win arguments, right? It's the part of us that we hold on to grudges. It's the part of us that we want to be right at all costs, at the sacrifice of others. And when you let go of your ego, you create a space for peace, understanding, and harmony. And it's not an easy choice. It's a humbling experience. Becoming a bigger person doesn't necessarily mean you're in a higher place. You as a bigger person, actually take a kneel. As a servant of others. It's, it's humbling when, when you let go of your pride. It's humbling to be kind, even if you know you're right. It's humbling that you face the consequences, even if it's not your fault. Be a bigger person today. And it's most often our blind spots that we forget, that we make decisions, we do actions, because, you know, it's, it's comfortable to our ego. And, you know, I am so grateful for the caring people around me in my life that I have asked and gave permission that you show me my blind spot. If I'm making so much decision that it's about me, or, or, or you mayabang ako, or, or I forget who and what matters most, it's, I, I've given myself and I've worked to have great people around me, greater people around me, so that I would be lifted up with the people around me. And it's a great inner, inner battle that we ought to face. There's so many wars outside, but there is a battle going on within you. And it's a battle of your ego. And it's a battle of, you know, it's a daily decision to keep our ego grounded. And not just for others, but it's also good for you. Amen? Can, we, can, can you put your hand to your heart? Yung mga may puso lang, wala. You know, how's your ego? When was the recent time that your ego got hurt? And, it, and, and you know, lumaban ka, nang away ka. But it's okay. It's, we're learning. We're loved first. You belong to God's tribe. And yes, we are called to love others. So I'd like to expound further this talk to give you five practical ways. This is really nice. Five practical ways to practice becoming a bigger person. I like that when I give talks, it's not just about inspiring you. It's really, you know, what would be my action items after this talk. Because that's who we are as Christians. We're not just getting the gospel from here to here. We have to do it with our hands and feet after. This is a sacred place, but uh, the sacred call is not within this place. When you get out of that door, do something and follow the Lord. Are you with me? Yes. Number one practical way is, this is hard, giving and receiving forgiveness. Giving and receiving forgiveness. One of the most powerful ways to become the bigger person is through forgiveness. When, we, when someone wrongs you, it's easy to hold a grudge on anger, on resentment. But by forgiving, you release the heavy burden that anger holds on to you. By, by forgiving, you release the, the angry places in your heart. And it's good for your, it's good for your body, really. Even your, your physical heart, not just your emotional and spiritual heart. Remember that forgiveness is not just for the other person. Forgiveness is good for you. It's you freeing yourself from the chains, from the chains of negativity. It's also a sign that you are becoming a bigger person. This is good. This is also a sign that you are becoming a bigger person when you take accountability of your mistakes, when you learn to say sorry, when you're able to say, my fault, mea culpa, Apologizing is recognizing the hurt that you caused someone. And you are ready to face the consequences with it. You know, I would like to supplement this talk uh, with, uh, with trying to learn about what can we do about forgiving, receiving, and giving. Well, try to read this book, The Five Languages of Apology. And it says a premise, 
five languages that we ought to understand. How many times do you seek and give forgiveness? Every day. Every day. So these are tools that are very good. And it, it says there are five languages. Briefly, just push it on the slide. Express regret. And it says, I am really sorry. Second, accept responsibility. I was wrong. Third, make restitution. It, me it means, how can I make it right? Number four, plan for change. I'll take steps to prevent a recurrence. Number four, request for forgiveness. Can you find it in your heart to forgive me? These are tools that you can use in giving and receiving forgiveness. That a forgiving person is a bigger person. Amen. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Second is this. Listen before you speak. Can you say that with me? Listen before you speak. A bigger person practices emphatic communication. Empathy is a beautiful quality that allows you Put yourself in someone else's shoes, in someone else's place. And you make an effort to understand their perspective, where they're coming from. And it becomes easier to respond with love and with compassion. Being the bigger person, showing empathy, even when it's challenging. It's hard to listen before you speak, but that is God's design. We have two ears and one mouth for a purpose. We listen more than we speak. And effective communication is again a hallmark of a bigger person. Instead of resorting to shouting, blaming, and name calling, we can strive to engage in calm, respectful conversations. We seek to understand before seeking to be understood. Whew, that's good. Seek to understand before seeking to be understood. And it's amazing, guys, how problems can be resolved by having beautiful, meaningful, respectful conversations. Family, business deals, corporate, sidelines, gigs, and etc. This is very powerful. It's amazing if we have an open mind, an open heart, Simon Sinek, Simon Sinek, you know him? Okay, good, you should know, good people around us, you know, in thought leaders around the world today. He said it so powerfully, there is a difference between listening and waiting for your turn to speak. Let that sink in for a while, there is a difference, there is a difference between listening and waiting for your turn to speak. Number three, I encourage us all to be responsive than reactive. Response than react. Respond than react. It is important to recognize the power of choice in how we respond to situation. Reaction is often a knee-jerk, impulsive way, while responding is thoughtful and deliberate. By taking a moment to pause and choosing, even in a few seconds or microseconds, by choosing to pause before you respond, you make a response, you can trigger and big, be a bigger person in challenging situations. Reactive is emotion-driven, aggressive. It fuels disagreement. It weakens you. But responsive means it's well thought. It calms, it helps resolve it, it empowers you. And I'm giving you the power today to be the bigger person. You can choose to respond than to react. Today, I wanna make it very much relevant as well, very practical. We are in a hyper-connected world of social media. I was in Dubai this week because of a business travel, but I was like, I feel like I was in Manila because every single thing that's happening all around us, I still get to know because it's all hyper-connected. And I realized how it shifts our mindset that I am in Dubai, but I'm not there because my consciousness, my attention is somewhere else. Are you with me? Guys, 
here in social media, I, I, I love Reader's Digest. Do you know Reader's Digest? You know, when I was younger, we, my mom used to order that, and that's, I love reading, yeah? It's now online, and they have an article that says, 13 social media etiquette rules that you need to stop breaking, yeah? I'm gonna distill it to five statements, and I'll flash it on the screen, please. Guys, social media, how many people are in the social media? Respond, then react. It says, number one, you can only say it online, only if you would say it in person. Mm. Second, you behave the same way online as you'd behave face to face. Ang ibang tao yung mga tao eh. Pag online kaysa face to face, ang lakas mo ka keyboard warrior. Pero pag hinapo, you, you mentioned something online about me. Oh no, love, no. Stay offline when you're angry. Yes. Tingnan yung katabi. Mm. <laughs> Stay offline when you're angry. Share it responsibly. Avoid oversharing about self and others. Some people are not comfortable that you post about them. Totoo yun. Lalo yung mga anak nila. I'm a parent. I'm very safeguarding the presence of my children online. You never know. Number five, just because you can post doesn't mean you should. Whew. Narinig mo yun? We respond, then we react. Number four, I need to proceed. Fourth practical way today is leading for others. Everybody say that. Leading for others. Remember that when you choose to become a bigger person, you become a role model for others. Your actions can inspire those around you and you choose kindness and understanding over conflict and negativity. We have the power. Everybody say that. We have the power. We have the power to create a ripple effect of positivity in this world. Yeah. If you choose to lead for others, not just to lead above others, you lead for others. And let me give you an insight that we could become a bigger person because we stand on the shoulders of the people that has gone for us, that has lifted us up. And I'm talking about those people who helped us rise to the, a new level, levels of living. I want you to take a pause now and I want you to think about this opportunity. Remember your leaders, your mentors, your teachers, and other selfless people that you know and who you consider as people who lifted you up. Can we have that? Close your eyes for a while and think about their faces. Just honor them. Think about them and silently give thanks to the Lord for your leaders, your mentors, your other selfless people that inspires you to think bigger, to love bigger, to serve bigger, and become a bigger person. Today, choose to spiritually bless them with the prayer. Amen. Open your eyes. You are also one of them. You can choose to become one of them too. Today, I take this time to honor all our feast servants, all the feast servants and feast leaders from past to present. Keep on going. You are our co-builders in this household of faith. When God sees your heart of service, he, he rewards you and the community appreciates you. May you have a thousandfold. Again, Hindi nyo sila nakikita. They're just all around. Palakpakan natin all our feast servants. You know who you are? We appreciate you. We thank you. I also want to share to you that we have different mercy ministries in our Light of Jesus families. Today, we honor all the staff and the volunteers of our different mercy ministries of the Light of Jesus family. Continue. Continue. A noble life that they have. Noble life so that they could, you know, lift up the lives of the poor, the oppressed, the abandoned, the abused, the hopeless, the sick, and the homeless. But I also, not just here in our ministry, our ministries are not just here. It's our daily workplaces, in the government, in our businesses, anywhere that you go. So today, to the workforce, in the corporate, business, government, trying to live and lead others to honorable and honest work. 
You matter. You, to keep the products and the services available to people, and yet you also try to be honest. You try to live honorably and work honorably. That is a bigger person thinking and living. We salute you. You know if it's you, actually. And lastly, to our dear family members, to my kuya aboy. He's still alive, so, <laughs> you know, to our family members who, who are alive, and, but those people also who have passed, who made sacrifices so that we could be uplifted, nagparaya for the benefit of us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We honor you. Lead for others. And lastly, fifth way for a practice. You're learning something. You like our talk today? This is one very important thing before we go. Self-care. Oh, yes. Being the bigger person can be emotionally taxing, especially in difficult situations. It's important to practice self-care and self-compassion. Mas maging mabait ka din sa sarili mo, Bago ka maging mabait sa ibang tao. It's important to recharge so that you can continue to radiate love and understanding to the people around you. We cannot pour from an empty cup. We cannot be able to wear and be bigger for other people when we ourselves are worn out. Take time to recharge, refresh, renew, to nourish and to detoxify so that you could be your best you. We've heard of the saying, take care of me and I'll take care of you. Yes? Let me provide you a, a bigger insight, if I may. You can say, I'll take care of me for you. You take care of you for me. It gives a healthier a bigger perspective, a personal responsibility of accountability, and we also get to manage expectation between each other. And that is a mark of a bigger person. So in my last slide, here's the summary of the five practical ways to become, to practice becoming a bigger person. Let's read it together. Giving and receiving forgiveness. Listen before you speak. Responding, not reacting. Leading for others and self-care. Here's a challenge. Which of the following would you start practicing today? Just pick one. Hmm? Can I see a raise of hands, please? How many are number one, giving and receiving forgiveness? Taas ang kamay. Okay, good. Appear. Iba-iba reaction. Iba. Yo iba. Nakakatawa. But nakakatawa na we are, we are learning. Second, listen before you speak. Yeah, fantastic, beautiful. Number three, responding, not reacting. Good, thank you for your response. Number four, leading for others. Leading for others. Be a great leader. Thirdly, uh, fifthly, self-care. Walang maglilive bukas, ha? Sabi ko si Sophie, self-care. Aawain ako na mga boss niya, ha? Yung boss ko yata nandito. Hindi ako maglilive bukas, magtatrabaho ako. Ay, let us leave here today. Can I ask you to stand? You learned something today? Give the Lord a big, big hand, everybody. Let us leave here today with a commitment to be the bigger person in not just some, but in all aspects of our lives. God is not interested in some of you and in some parts of your life and become just bigger at work or just bigger in ministry, bigger in my family. No, 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 no. God is interested in all of you. God is crazy in love with you. He wants all of you. He wants a bigger, bigger, whole person of you, not just in some areas of your life. When we strive together to be bigger, we can recreate our world Love than fear, hope than hate, peace than chaos. And as we end, I'm offering a word of hope to all of us today from the Word of God. We're faced with wars, battles in this world. You know that. You know the news. But I also want to acknowledge there are lots of wars and battles within us. 
It's even crazier if you really get to see it. Let this be our divine reassurance. Lord, it's so hard to be a bigger person. Bigger is not necessarily easier. But this is God's encouragement for us. From 1 John 4, verse 4, He says, You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So, as we end this talk, I invite you to look to Jesus. The kind of love that embraces us despite our sins, despite our failures, despite our smallness and feeling of being so little. Don't look to you. Look to Him. Let God, let His love lift you up today to bigger heights than ever before, leading us to greater living. And there is no greater love than this. Amen. It is so beautiful to be in the presence of God. And can we pray right now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? I want you just to lift up to Him all your needs. Whatever you're going through, He knows what you're going through. He knows where you're coming from. He knows the burdens of your heart. Just, just bring it up to God and say, Lord, I surrender everything that all hurt and all pain and all worries and all fear. Lift them all up to you, Lord. I surrender them to you. You are my king and you are the center of my life. And I trust you and I know that you are blessing me right now. I receive your love. I receive your joy. I receive your peace. I receive your healing. I receive your provision in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Live a fantastic life.